Okay, my name's Anthony Spateri. Um, we're going to go through continuous data protection, CDP. Okay, so quick look at the agenda. We're going to look at why. We're going to look at what we're leveraging for our continuous data protection technology. And then we're going to go into a, well, it was a deep dive, but with time committing, we'll just basically rush through it a little bit and get to the demo <laughs> just to show you that it is there. So why continuous data protection? So we understand today that data is becoming more and more critical in certain workloads are becoming more critical. So it's all about categorising of your data these days, categorising your workloads, understanding that you've got a tier one applications and you might need to get and recover that data quicker. So we're talking about lower RPOs. So previously, if you're taking a point in time in a day, you know, the RPO is 24 hours, you know, we can get that down to say 15 minutes with traditional snapshot based backups. But what we're looking here with continuous data protection is looking at that top tier. So after you categorise your workloads, what are you looking to do and how quickly are you looking to recover it? And with CDP, what Veeam will have is end-to-end -end policy based management of these workloads, okay? You've now got the ability to do a backup, okay? You've got the ability to do a snapshot based replication, which is our traditional replication engine, which can be 15 minute RPOs. If you're using stuff like vSAN as your data store, you can drill that down to five minutes. That's kind of what they say can work with that technology. But with CDP, we're looking at per second RPOs, okay? Now, obviously what we're looking at doing here is categorising those important data, those workloads, and adding a particular policy to it. How are we doing this? We're doing this by leveraging the vSphere API for IO filtering, okay? And this has been around for a couple of years now and started off as a caching engine. So a lot of vendors use this to basically do um, inline caching to accelerate data on the disks and usually put like an SSD in the way and create some fast to play, a faster area of storage where they can accelerate their data. What it also had in it was a replication engine and the replication engine is what we're tapping into. So effectively what this particular subset from, v from VMware has allowed us to do is to go in and use these APIs and intercept the IOs in a safe way. Previously, um, the way that you would do this, or some uh, companies did it, was effectively not so much hacking, but going through straight to the kernel, going using a backdoor and actually intercepting those IOs. Now that leads to all sorts of issues, and what VMware realised with companies doing this is they needed to release a framework to get a lot of vendors to do this in a nicer way. This is really critical in terms of CDP because you don't want to pink screen your host when you're putting these data out. It's the key behind this. And what we're doing here is we're effectively ins installing a VIB called a filter driver. We're installing that onto the hosts. We're then leveraging the user world and the kernel world. The user world is where the VM lives. We attach a filter driver to the particular VM. That's what dictates where the IO is going to be copied in and out when it actually is enabled via the policy. And then it's going to send it to a daemon and effectively start to move the data from the source to the target. A very, very quick overview of the component tree. So what we have first is a coordinator. So what we're going to be doing is introducing the concept of coordinator service. This coordinator service is the brain of the CDP. It's going to understand exactly what VMs are eligible for CDP in terms of how you set up these CDP policies. It's then going to basically tell the source and target side where to attach the filter from on the actual source VM and then effectively how that data moves based on the policies that you set, that, those RPO policies, okay? We then have the daemons, which effectively work in kernel on ESX, SI. Important to mention this is only for vSphere at this point in time, okay? So effectively what we're doing is we're installing that VIB. The VIB installs a driver. For those that haven't played with VMware and understand how that works, it's effectively using the same methodologies as if you were installing an NSX VIB or any sort of traditional VIB at that level. We then have the filter driver, and the filter driver attaches itself specifically to the VM, okay? It's effectively a little uh, policy that inserts itself into the VMDK file to tell it that it is a candidate for the CDP functionality. We then leverage the proxies, source and target. And there are some smarts built into this, into the proxy. The proxy can be physical. If it's using physical, it's using network mode or if it's uh, virtual, we're actually doing it through the VM bus, okay? So the option is there to use physical or virtual. Now, the key differential in our implementation of this is the fact that you don't need to attach a proxy per host, okay? You can start small with one proxy and scale as you need. That's very important because some of the competitive products out there 
will effectively dictate that you add a proxy or some sort of appliance to each host, which effectively you know, streams that data through. For us, we're letting you guys scale it. Start small. If you've only got four machines you want to do, which is typically out of a subset of 100 machines, you might have five or 10 that you want to categorize for CDP. Okay? At this point, we're not really penalizing you guys for having this feature by adding additional resources on each host, taking up crucial memory, crucial resources. So there's true scalability in the fact that this proxy is independent of the hosts. Uh, and then what we do is we send the journal data across. And we do that, obviously, um, through the proxies, source to target. The journaling data is a flow of particular data based on the RPO. If it's a five second RPO, then we're going to basically send through five, every five seconds what's changed on the source side to the target. Pretty straightforward stuff in terms of you know, what it actually is to shift data from one side to the other. But again, something that's really smart and something that we've done um, in a way. And I want to show you this to you because who here knows who played Half-Life? Anyone played Half-Life back in the day? Half-Life 1, Half-Life 2, we're still waiting for Half-Life 3. Hasn't come. <laughs> Um, might never come actually. Um, that's the kind of joke that we make with CDP because we've announced this and we've had this in, in the works for a couple of years now. The key part about it is the reliability. This is something that you don't want to muck around with. Okay? This is critical data. And just to be uh, completely transparent, working with uh, VMware and the driver and the VIO driver initially, it was not very stable. Okay, um, it wasn't performing up to scratch. So we've actually been working very closely our two R&D departments with VMware to get this up to scratch where now it's at a point where we can actually release it. And if you actually check the, um, the VMware site for the VIO and the actual filter driver itself, you'll see there's a number of current vendors that are actually have released this already. Ironically, the work we've done with VMware has enabled our competitors to get this out a little bit quicker. But again, we wanted to get this out to make sure it was reliable. We don't want to pink screen the host when you're doing CDP stuff, okay? That's a critical part here. So what I'm going to do is quickly show you that it isn't a Half-Life 3 situation, actually show you what it looks like. Now this must be said again, probably in rushing the first part, I didn't mention that this is not part of our V10 release that's coming over the next couple of months. It's going to be coming in a subsequent release um, in the first half of next year we're hoping for, okay? So this is something not in V10, but it's something at the moment that's in a technology preview three. So again, we've put it through tons of internal testing to make sure that it's actually gonna do what it does out of the box, okay? And I'm pretty confident this is gonna be the most reliable and performance-based CDP um, product out there when it gets released. So what I've got here in my server is a couple of vSphere's. If I click on properties, um, and if I work through this, what we've done here is effectively gone through the normal steps to add a vSphere server to our Veeam infrastructure. But the next step, once we've actually gone through and detected it, is we've got the CDP filter, filter here. We've got the option to install the CDP filter on all the hosts in the following cluster. So we're going to install this cluster wide, not per host. The reason for that is when you add and remove hosts in a cluster, you want to make sure it's consistent. It's the way that VIBs effectively work. If anyone's installed NSX, then you understand you do it in the same way you install it in the cluster. If you bring that host in maintenance mode, take it out of the cluster, it'll uninstall the VIB. When you bring it back in, it's going to reinstall it. Okay, it's just a way of keeping it nice and clean. So the filter is the VIB? Yeah, the filter driver is the VIB, yep, that's correct. Uh, and effectively from there, you can install it, uninstall it, and it'll take it and install the VIB on every host. What that looks like, you do it obviously on the source and target side. And what it actually looks like from the, from the uh, vSphere point of view. So this here is going to log me out. Well done. We'll log back in there. So what we've got here is the source side. And at the source side, if we click on the actual DC itself, you can see here under IO filters, we've now got the Veeam VVR. That's what we call our filter driver. And you can see that it's active on two hosts. And if you click on the VMs here, you can see that it's actually attached to those three particular VMs. So we know straight away that these three VMs have got the filter driver attached to it and it's working and it's in play. On the source side, what we'd see is basically the replicas. And I'll actually log into that now just to sort of show you that. So the same side here, this is now looking at the actual source uh, target side. If we click on the host as well, 
we'll see we've got the I.O. filter and we can see that it's actually installed and attached there as well. So this host is ready to receive the CDP data and you can see here we've got a couple of replicas in play at the moment. If I actually go to the host, I just wanted to show you very quickly that we have the daemon running in memory. So you can see that we've got the actual daemon that runs in memory and then we've got a heap of polling services as well. Okay, just showing that we've actually got it running in memory. We've also got um, the driver there so you can see that the vib is in play. Again, you can uninstall and manipulate it from here if you wanted to but again, it's controlled by the actual controller node itself. And when I mentioned the filter driver and what that does in a particular VM, if I go and actually edit the VMDK of this particular machine, you'll see that we've got a couple of additions to that VMDK where we install the IO filter and we also tell it what sidecars and sidecars there are effectively the journaling data and how we actually tell it what is relative to the actual proxy. So I wanted to dive into that to show you how we actually manipulate the actual VM itself. In terms of, let's go back to the actual machine itself very quickly in terms of the jobs, you can see that I've got two jobs set up. Now we're actually doing this job via uh, tagging, okay? So the way that we talked about this policy-based approach to, um, to backup now, that extends itself to replication. And the way that I've configured this is the virtual machines, I've done it via a tag, okay? It's the smartest way to do it. And if you have a look here, we've got the option to add via VM name or via tag. When you go here through the tag, you can see that I've set up a number of different tags. Really, this is the only way to start doing your backups and replications. So straight away, if you add a tag to a machine, it's going to effectively be attached to this particular job. It's the best way. Attach, and if you remove the tag, it's removed from the job. It's a good way to keep the jobs consistent and understand when you create a VM, add the policy and go from there. Um, in terms of the job settings, uh, you can see we select the source and target proxy. With the schedule, this is where we tell it the RPO settings. So this is where we go 60 seconds here for this particular one. You then got short term retention, which is how many hours do you want that 60 second CDP policy to be streaming? And then you've got this long term retention at what point would roll up that previous eight hours worth into a roll up and that would be a crash consistent state from there. Okay, so we'll just roll that in really quickly. What I wanted to do timing, I've got one minute and I wanted to actually show this because I think it's a pretty cool demo. Um, you can see here that we've got the 60 second um, job here. You can see we've got one VM attached to it. Now if I go back to the vCenter and the source, you can see I've got a machine called TFD20. Now that machine hasn't actually got a tag associated with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add a tag and I'm going to add it to that 60 second RPO and assign that. So that's now effectively assigned the tag. Now what the coordinator is going to do in the background is go, okay, I can see that this VM is, has been associated with this tag and if the demo gods are nice to me, in a few seconds it'll pop up in that job. So it takes a couple of seconds to come through but effectively it's going to come and add it to the job. There we go. Actually worked, which is amazing. I love it when live demos work. Um, <laughs> So now what we've got there is this policy, again, automatically picks up that machine, the replication starts. And what it's going to do to start with is when CDP is ready, it's going to configure it. And I don't think we've got enough time, but I wanted to show that in the source side, it'll effectively start to instantiate that VM. <coughs> in fact, there we go, it happened really quickly. So you can see there that the replica is now ready and we're in fact now replicating that machine. <laughs>